In this video, I will be going over how I set up lightmaps in my game Vampire Heist, and how you can set things up to quickly get into using baked lighting. In addition, I will also show three methods you can use to emulate turning lights on and off in areas using baked lighting, which is one of the only major difficulties I found when going from real time to baked lights that I have yet to see being covered elsewhere. To show off the pros of light maps, here's a single room I've set up in three different ways using baked lighting, alongside an example using only real time lights to show the contrast. Real time lights are great for their dynamic uses and shadows, however, they can't really be used for fine details, since too many will begin to eat up processing power, and that meshes can only reference so many real time lights before the light rendering begins to break down and lose detail. Baked lights, however, are perfect for overall scenes. You can add as many as you like, giving you precise control over their effects, letting you add fine details to your scene, and since it's all pre-rendered, it won't hit your game's performance. Here are the settings I use for my light maps. I turn the environmental lighting to color from Skybox and set the color to a near complete black. This lets me have the option for high contrast in my scene. In the light mapping settings, I change progressive to enlightened, and after this I'll turn the ambient occlusion on. To speed up editing, I will turn off auto-generate lighting and also lower the light map resolution to 5 or even 2, which I will then later turn back up again once I'm done editing the lighting in the scene. Using these settings, I can quickly edit the baked lights, manually generate the lighting, check the overall intensities, colors, and positions are fine, and then up the resolution to generate the final bake. When using light maps, don't forget to set the objects to be affected to static, and on their model import settings, check yes to generate light map UVs. To check what the light map textures themselves look like, go to the viewport options and go from shaded to baked light maps. This will let you see the resolution of light map details on objects and the raw lighting. If you find an object resolution is off, you can change its density by going to the object's mesh renderer component, expanding light mapping and changing the scale in light map value. Finally, don't forget to add light probes about your scene. These will convert the baked lighting information to something that can affect real-time non-static objects in your scene. Light maps are static. For most games, this is fine, but sometimes you want to be able to do things like making an area go dark. Something simple to do with real-time light, but impossible for baked lights. Luckily, there are workarounds. I'll be covering three methods I know of to get around this projectors, mixed lighting, and swapping light maps. Projectors can be found on the Asset Store as part of the Unity Technologies Standard Assets package. The Projectors folder can be found in the Standard Assets folder under Effects. Projectors are made to project an image on top of any mesh in its area. For our purposes and light maps, we are going to use them to project dark areas across multiple separate rooms, giving the effect of these well-lit rooms having their light being turned off and on. To achieve this, you simply need to set the projector to be orthographic, scale it to the room in question, and assign a material using the multiply shader under projector. For the material, use the default fall of texture used in the projector examples, and for the texture, make a dark square as shown in the video. I recommend making the square a dark blue instead of pure black. When you do this, you must set the warp mode in the image settings of the texture to be clamp, or else the projector will loop the texture across the whole scene. Projectors work great for light areas you just want to darken. This method is quick to use and can be edited freely in one time. A thing to keep in mind, however, is projectors will also overpower any real-time light you have in their area. So, real-time light intensities and colors will also be dampened by projectors. Sometimes you want the light to be the focus of an area, to have moving shadows, or have the dark areas be more detailed. In these instances, a mixture of real-time and baked lighting will do the trick. In my example scene from Vampire Heist, I used a single strong real-time light to add contrast and brighten a dark room. The final method is to swap the light maps of an object in real time. By making an alternative dark version of your level as a new scene, 
you can bake an alternative dark version of the light maps and light probes. Once these have been generated, you can use both light and dark versions in your main scene and toggle between them. This method requires the most prep work and technical know-how, but on the plus side, it also gives you the most control over how the dark and bright versions of your scene will look like. While I am only bringing up the concept of this method here, I will be releasing a video soon that will go over how I made it so I could swap the light maps and probes in my scene in detail. To see it when it's out, you can follow the channel or check the description below where there will be a link to the video when it's available. With that, I've covered the essentials you should need to get ready to use light maps. So, one last topic before ending the video is post-processing effects. While not technically lighting, post-processing is a quick way to add extra depth to your game's colours and visuals and is worth quickly introducing you to. To get camera effects, open the package manager window and make sure to be viewing all packages. Once all the packages have loaded, scroll down to post-processing and install. To set up post-processing in your scene, go to the main camera, set its layer to post-processing and add the two components post-processing layer and post-processing volume. In post-processing layer, set the trigger to the main camera or press the this button and set layer to post-processing. In post-processing volume, tick is global and make a new profile. Making a new profile will generate a file that saves the settings for the effects you will add to the camera and can be used in other scenes. Most effects will tell you they can't work when color space is set to gamma. This setting can be found in the project window, go to player and scroll down to other settings. Color space is the first option. Simply set it to linear and wait for Unity to finish processing to be ready to use these effects. To add an effect, just press add effect and pick what takes your fancy. Just remember to enable the properties of the effect after you add it. Here are the settings for the profile I used for Vampire Heist. I found ambient occlusion and color grading did a lot to quickly up the visual quality of my game. Any of these are worth taking the time just to play around with and see if they can't make your game look better. If you want to see what the effects look like while editing, press the button shown in the video and make sure it is active and post-processing is enabled. This lets you view additional visual effects in the scene view. And that's all for now. While this isn't an expert course on light maps, hopefully this should let you know what to do so you can just jump into using them without having to worry about the small stuff and settings. If you liked this video, why not help me out by following the link in the description and giving my most recent game release, Vampire Heist, a try. Liking, commenting on this video and subscribing to the channel will also be appreciated. While I don't do too many videos, if there's anything you've seen me doing that you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments so I know what kind of things people would like me to do in the future. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful and my voice was not too fast this time. See you later and good luck developing. Thank you.